All right, everybody, it's my favorite time of the week again when I get to answer your questions. It's the Andrew Zimmern Spilled Milk Substack Ask Me Anything. Uh, if you'd like to ask me questions, instructions are right down there. Uh, Michael asks, I have a question about chef's knives. A lot of chef knives questions these days. Uh, websites often have expensive chef's knives from Germany, Japan, etc. That's true, so do I. It's easy to spend many hundreds on a knife. Boy, if I wish that's all they were. Um, sadly, I'm addicted. Uh, I have, uh, I think I've said this before, I mean, I'm, I'm not proud of this. I, I think it's an overspend and ridiculous and half of them I never even see. Uh, but I probably have 200 knives and some of them, especially the custom made ones, are worth a fortune. Um, but Michael continues, however, when I worked in a New York City fine dining restaurant as a bartender, I noticed that the chef and cooks mostly use cheap white plastic handled chef's petty and bony knives from the restaurant supply store. True. They kept them nice and sharp and honed constantly. True. I rarely saw an expensive knife in that kitchen. Question, are the restaurant supply store knives as good as the expensive ones? Uh, in many cases, they can be. Um, so, so here's the deal. There are uh, several German and Swiss and US companies that use really hard, really good steel on their knives. Uh, they make them in bulk, they sell them in bulk. Um, they use very cheap uh, handles, right? And, uh, and that's fine, because it's really all about the steel. And what's, what's important about the steel is that it's, it's hard enough to sort of hold an edge for a while, uh, but also has the ability to be resharpened and kept sharp. And Michael, I would, I would just say one thing. You probably worked in a restaurant uh, where the, the, the kitchen team and, and the bar team kept all their knives sharp. Um, I have found, uh, you know, those same white handled knives, uh, which are made by a whole variety of companies. I mean, you know, from uh, Volrath to Solingen to, I mean, there's some, there, there are all kinds of companies that make them. I don't want to get into endorsing one company over another. But the idea is, uh, is you're absolutely right. And those restaurant supply store knives, uh, at least as of 10 years ago, uh, were as good as the uh, mid-range ones that you see uh, for several hundred dollars. Um, now, I would argue that those mid-range ones that you are spending you know, several hundred dollars for are probably uh, slightly better steel, different shape, more attractive, have other reasons uh, that we love them, right? And uh, so it really is what you're looking for. Uh, but if you don't mind the industrial look, you wanna save a lot of money, there are really, really good sets uh, at restaurant supply stores. Sam says, I found your vinegar video to be super insightful and eye-opening. Thank you, I was naive. We're gonna do more things like that. I was naive on balsamic and now I feel educated. Wow, thank you, Sam. Uh, a couple of follow-up questions. You mentioned some vinegars you store in the refrigerator, but most you store in the drawer. Anything with a lot of fruit solids, uh, or in some cases, vegetable solids, uh, I keep in the refrigerator. Um, I always put my vinegar in the fridge. Well, that's, that's great. I use my uh, cleaner vinegars, the ones that are clear, that don't have a lot of pulp in them. Uh, I, I just use vinegar so much to season so many things and I go through, you know, I cook a lot and I'm always testing recipes. Um, so if you don't cook a lot, but you have a lot of vinegars, definitely keep them uh, in the fridge. Uh, otherwise, I mean, I have a nice cool drawer next to, uh, well, in my counter. Uh, how long would you keep an open bottle before it's likely bad? Vinegar has already turned, my friend. Uh, the problem is that if you have a fruit vinegar, like let's say uh, raspberry vinegar, uh, I wouldn't keep it opened unrefrigerated for more than a couple of months because the fruit solids in there can actually turn uh, and then it gives your vinegar an off flavor. I keep my raspberry vinegar, my calamansi vinegar. I think we showed this in the video. Maybe I pulled the... Um, the bottles out before we started shooting. But I keep three or four of my vinegars and several of my oils. I keep my hazelnut oil, for example, my pecan oil, uh, things like that in the fridge as well. 
Uh, also, I would love it if you would share some of your favorite recipes or tips for dressings with sherry vinegars or the Saba. I use uh, sherry vinegar to finish so many sauces, so many, I mean, I'll just, I'll just drizzle a couple tablespoons on chicken when it comes off the grill. Uh, that's how much I love sherry wine vinegar. Um, for things like Saba and other uh, sweet vinegar concentrates that are syrupy, put them over plain vanilla custard, put it over uh, uh, diced fruits, especially watermelon. Oh my God. Uh, real uh, aged uh, balsamic vinegar or any of the Sabas or the uh, other vinegars like that on watermelon is my, oh, I, I, can, I can't stop eating it. Um, but also vanilla ice cream. I love syrupy, thick, reduced vinegar over uh, vanilla ice cream. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, the other thing is that I use them, uh, mix them with like mix sherry wine vinegar with uh, a little brown butter and sugar, just bring it to a boil and use that as a glaze to finish uh, tarts, uh, sweet or uh, pork chops off the grill. It's a great way to put sweet and sour flavors on anything. See you next time. Let me see if I can turn this off. <laughs>